NHS? Well, that's it for a Friday. Find a friend, go downtown. But whatever you do, remember, make good choices. Whoa, hey, the bell does not dismiss you, I do. But Jayla, it's Friday. Fine. I'm Andrea, and I'm a member of the NHS Philharmonic. This week, the transcript learns about the Students of Color Alliance and the Black Student Union, looks into the Smith Art Museum, and investigates a recent rally. Takeaways goes to Mochi Nut, Hamped Up talks Frisbee, and Culture Shock finds out about a local artist. On Monday, after nearly two years of stalling, the Hungarian parliament finally voted to allow Sweden to join NATO. The Nordic country is set to join in the coming weeks, expanding the NATO alliance to 32 countries. In other news, on March 5th, the Massachusetts presidential primary is set to begin, with Democrats Joe Biden and Dean Phillips and Republicans Donald Trump and Nikki Haley appearing on the ballot. Candidates Joe Biden and Donald Trump are expected to win. On Monday, in an email to all staff, Principal Bill Worley announced that he would be leaving NHS at the end of the year. This announcement was also expanded to students and caregivers on Tuesday. I'm Michael Torno and thanks for watching. The Students of Color Alliance is a club that aims to provide community advocacy, equity, and inclusion for students at NHS. Organizations like SOCA have a rich history dating back to the civil rights movement of the 1960s. Today, the group facilitates positive change through their monthly meetings and organization of community events. We spoke to members of SOCA to learn more. So I think that there are spaces for students of color but I think where I see more of the issue is there are spaces that are meant to be for everyone and aren't inclusive, whether that's like certain AP classes or um, specific sports. I think that that's where the push should be more of. As of right now, there's only SOCA and BSU for people to go to, but other than that, we haven't gotten that much support from like administration or like other teachers. Some people just feel uncomfortable talking about like issues people of color go through. To support the people of color of NHS in a way to provide a safe space for them to go to so that way we can talk about like current problems that are bothering us, certain things that need to be discussed, and to hold like administration and NHS, like the NHS community accountable for any like prejudice or bias. SOCA works to support students of color at the school by creating a space um, where it's safe to, you know, uh, be supported and be like who you are um, and really express yourself and your culture um, in a way that you want. If you are interested in joining SOCA, contact co-presidents Sabrina and Josephine Hopkins. Thanks so much for watching and see you next week.
The Black Student Union was formed at the beginning of the school year. The club works to provide a voice and platform for black students within the school. With the first Black Student Union being formed in 1966 at the San Francisco State University, the NHS Black Student Union makes the organization currently one of over 1,000 black student unions across the nation. This week, we spoke to the Black Student Union president and vice president to learn more. I came from a Catholic school, and like we had a Black Student Union there, and I thought it was like kind of weird that I came to like a more progressive school with a bunch of Black people, and there was no Black Student Union. I was like, "What's going on here?" I feel like it brings more education towards Black history because Black history is American history. I feel so. I feel like just getting more getting more media out like as like in murals and announcements and just events that we do from our club i feel like it like brings brings a lot more to the environment of the school than just taking a class would when it's confined to one space i think that the bsu is like just a really good environment for all of the african americans here i mean it really brings together like all of like the diverse you know students um so yeah, I think, it's, I think it's really good, very helpful. I'd say the BSU has definitely helped me make more connections. Um, I feel like I've been like pretty antisocial over the past year or so, and the BSU has just really helped me make friends. I really hope that the BSU can become a safer space for African Americans, and I really hope that we can include more activities and like events to bring together more African Americans, so yeah, because we should all be doing our part. Um, I hope honestly that more black people feel comfortable joining the actual black student union, I think, because they have like their own preconceived notions about like what we do in the club mm -hmm. or the type of people, type of people, there is no specific type of black person. Why wouldn't you want to have a place to go and be black in a predominantly oh. white school? I mean, come on, we, I mean, we do it in a hallway, but now we got a place to do it. Yeah, so, you know. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in joining the Black Student Union, they meet Wednesdays during Flex in Mr. Lucy's room. On July 1st, 2023, the Smith College Museum of Art announced that all admission will be free to the public. SCMA is home to many types of art with a huge variety with the cultures and forms they showcase. We will be checking out the museum and seeking what has changed since the announcement about paid admission and seeing what the museum has to offer for people who want to visit. So admission became free at the museum um, starting in July on July 1st of 2023, um, this past summer. Um, and we have noticed a change. We've noticed a change in that people that um, previously always came to the museum and had a charge um, are now really excited that there isn't one. Um, we have started to notice an uptick in attendance of uh, people across the community coming to the museum. So one wonderful thing since admission became free is that people can just pop into the museum whenever they want to. So in the past, if you paid $5 to get into the museum, you might feel like it's a big commitment to get the most of your money. Um, but now we have, now that we've removed the barrier of an admission cost, and um, people can walk in off the street, um, walk in in between their classes, and come and see their favorite work of art. Um, so people have definitely changed kind of their museum behavior, kind of changed the way in which they're engaging with the museum. And it's really nice to see it can be in this more sort of casual way um, where people can come in and kind of retreat um, or seek solace in the museum. They can recharge in the museum. They can get inspired in the museum. The museum accomplishes so much already and they do a lot for K through 12 educators, like offering us free field trips. Um, I think it would be great to offer more programming for teens specifically. So those teenagers who are interested in curating opportunities and art history opportunities. Currently, I take my drawing and painting students to the Miss Smith College Art Museum. And it's great because the curators there walk us through exactly um, what we request to see. So you can see things from the collection or you can see things that are physically on display and they're really accommodating. Make sure to check out the Smith College Museum of Art on 20th Elm Street in downtown Northampton. 
Even if you have already visited the museum before, the gallery changes all the time. See you next week and thanks for watching. On February 4th, Jewish Voices for Peace, an anti-Zionist left-wing Jewish activist organization, held a rally at the roundabout by the bridge to Hadley, advocating for a ceasefire in Gaza. As this was happening, there was a car caravan for the safe release of Israeli hostages. The caravan drove from Sheldon Field to UMass Amherst. The JVP holds rallies every Sunday at 11. This week, we spoke to the organizers of the JVP rally and a speaker of from the car caravan to hear their thoughts surrounding the rallies. We have been doing weekly protests since um, since October. So this um, pro-Israel car caravan that happened was a counter protest to our weekly protests. And we were aware that it was happening and we took extra care and making sure we had lots of security just because their cars were people like who knows what could happen, you know, especially if they're angry. So if the other side is protesting every week, I don't think we should protest every week. There should be a clear message of what you're saying is actually affecting us. And there are a lot of people here that are Jews and they want their voice to be heard. We believe in fighting anti-Semitism with, with the idea of collective liberation. And, and we want to also bring the hostages back safely. So we're, we're this group that's doing all of this and, and, and educating people on anti-Zionism and what that means. Spreading the awareness of the idea of the hostages is very important because there is a reason why Israel is doing all those stuff. It, there's no such thing as anti-Zionism. Every person who is against Zionism is against Jews and it's just easier to say it. Zionists and, and Zionist propaganda and the Israeli government is trying to make it seem like this is what all Jews want. But there is a huge faction of American Jews that have not supported the Israeli government for a very long time. When we were passing the pro-Palestine rally, I saw a lot of people that are saying a message that they don't really understand. Because screaming ceasefire now, when there were so many offers for ceasefire in return of the hostages, and Hamas declined all of them. The people that are saying, oh, we have to we have to get rid of Hamas. That's just like a fear. It's a fear reaction. And there's no there's no justification for mass murder. That that is terrorism. That is terrorism. A lot of the people just don't bother to check their facts. It's really sad because it's my family there. It's my people. It's my home. It, it's everything that I know. We are building community. On February 4th, when there were 400 people, I really saw, wow, we are building such a strong base. It was nice to see a lot of people that support Israel, took their time to, to participate and be there. So we thought it would be aggressive or that there would be a lot of yelling, but it was like just not that many cars at all. And there were just so many of us. The main message was given. There were a lot of cars really showed some presence of people. Doing a car parade is the best thing that we could have done because we want to say we are here, we're present, and we're not going to harm anyone. Thanks for watching and we hope you feel more informed on this topic. Hello and welcome back to Takeaways. This week, Takeaways checked out the brand new dessert place in downtown Northampton, Mochi Nut. Mochi Nut is an American restaurant chain originating in California with nearly 150 locations in the U.S. and others in Thailand and South Korea. The restaurant specializes in dessert foods, with their namesake dish being the mochi donut, a Hawaiian originating mix between the American donut and Japanese mochi. We went into Northampton to try this unique treat and see what else the chain had to offer. <laughs> We got five mochi donuts. Potato original hot dog. Starting off with appearance. The mochi donuts look amazing. The frosting is nice. They all have sprinkles. I personally give it eight out of ten. I'd agree. I'd say eight out of ten. Let's dig in. Yeah, let's. We're gonna start with the fruity pebbles mochi donut. Three, two, two one. Two work. Hey. Oh my gosh. That one I'm gonna have to give a nine out of ten. Me too. I'm gonna give it an eight just because I don't love pretty couples. Eight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fair. Pretty good rating though. Moving on. I personally love the appearance of this. The diced potatoes fried together all around the hot dog with the drizzle of sauce on top is really appealing. And the, the boxes for all everything that so uh, came in. Very cute, very stylish. Love the graphics. Looks great. Really matches the interior. 
yes, the interior looked amazing. If, if you can, check out Mochino, it's got an amazing interior. Very nice, nice spot. Try it out. <laughs> you didn't get any hot dogs. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> okay. That one went for the kill? Well, all of my bag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, for me, just because it was cold, because it's been sitting out for a bit, like, six and a half out of ten, um, I bet you if it's fresh and hot, it's going to be, like, really good. I, uh, eat that very nicely, but I love the mix of the sauce, fried potato and hot dog. The consistency of the mix of textures, crunchy, soft, doughy, and saucy, is really tasty. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. We said eight a lot, but I'm going to go eight again. I'd say cold, it's like a seven out of ten, and I think if it was hot, it would be like eight. I'd say considering how expensive most places are now, I'd say $30 for all of it is pretty good. Even considering the um, two free donuts. Um, so I give the price about the same. Thank you again to the PTO for help funding this. Thank you so much for watching Takeaways. Make sure to check in next week to see our new Takeaways spin-offs. See you next week. <laughs>
Thanks so much for watching. The NHS Philharmonic provides performances and volunteer opportunities of classical musicians. If you're interested, scan the QR code on the posters around the school or check out our Instagram to find out about future opportunities. Volunteer opportunities take place once or twice a month.